Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Above Board with Candor Path. Now, as promised, um, you know, we're, we're changing up the format a little bit. Nothing crazy. We're just making some additions to the conversations that we like to have. And today we have Miss Megan Glass with us. Megan is our director of operations here at Candor Path. Um, but she's so much more than that. I think Matt has, has, we've sort of defined what, what's the, what is the, she's the glue. Is the, she is, we call her glue? Elmers sometimes because that's her nickname. Cause she's that's not the an glue. endearing name. Elmers? Oh, gorilla, it's better yeah, than gorilla. Like that one. How about gorilla? I think we can do better. <laughs> we can do better. She's the well, gorilla glue that holds <laughs> our company together. No, just kidding. We are, we are very glad and blessed to have Megan as a part of our team. She truly is the glue that holds us all together. She is does a little bit of everything within our company. And uh, as everyone, as business owners that are listening to this, and uh, as you may be working in a company listening to this, know there's that one person that just kind of keeps it all together. And she even has a guard dog who is protecting Rangers her Rangers making times. an appearance today <laughs> That's, on the podcast. <laughs> At any yeah, given moment, it could, be Casey, it could be Casey Chipper or Ranger for any of us. So that is quite okay because we're above board, right? And that's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's what happens sometimes. Um, so besides being the director of operations, um, she has an illustrious career in event planning over 15 years, five of which um, was with this little company. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's called Walt Disney Corporation. Is that <laughs> is that even the right name of it? Walt Disney Corporation? Walt Disney and did company? I hear correctly, you were yeah. a musketeer for them? I think we just talked no. about this in the pre-call. Were you, I, I were you on the show? I am in that age demographic too. I could have been, but no, that is that is unfortunately not my background. Who's your favorite musketeer? One, two, three, go. Justin Timberlake. Yeah, same. Of course, JT. I mean, is there any other? <laughs> I didn't know there was other ones. <laughs> All right, we're going off track. Like we got to get back on track here. Um, so last last episode, we talked about this thing called EOS, Entrepreneurial Operating System, um, and and the book is Traction by Gina Wickman. And we're going to touch on that today because, as Matt uh, so affectionately said, Megan is the Elmer's glue that kind of keeps everything together. And Megan, you have um, a lot of experience with us in doing uh, and operating this whole traction thing within the company. Um, but there's so much that we want to ask you about today. Um, you know, career changes, finding balance, uh, you know, work-life balance and, and all that type of stuff. So um, without further ado, I guess, like, let's formally welcome you to the show. Hey, Megan. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Have a female presence on the podcast today. Oh, is this a good the point. first female that we, boy, that's something we, we did not <laughs> think through. That's awesome. That is Great. exciting. That is exciting. Well, thank you for joining us today. <laughs> Um, we're, we're especially thrilled to have you on just to be able to sort of shed light on, I mean, if anyone's listened to our show before, you guys kind of know, like we, we talk about all sorts of different things, but I would say woven into many conversations is this whole idea of work-life balance, which is just this very difficult feat to achieve, of course. Um, but Megan, like maybe let's rewind a couple years, like maybe 2019 going into 2020, um, talk about talk a little bit about work life balance, what that means to you now, and and what that maybe transition looks like as you were trying to achieve work life balance. Sure, um, I could take it back a little bit further than that, even because it, being a working parent is hard. M- man, woman, mom, dad, more dads, more moms, whatever your situation is. Um, and I think I have a unique perspective because I've done it all three ways. Um, when I had an infant, I worked full time in corporate events, a job that took a lot of nights and weekends. I started taking my infant to events at uh, 10 weeks old and just put her on or put her in the stroller and, and we would go. And um, then I also stayed home with her for a year. And then that's kind of when I ended up at Disney and kind of a part time project based role for communications events. So anything coming out of the public relations department, corporate events. Um, anything media related. So if there's media in the park or on the cruise ships, our team is involved. And that was when I tried to have it all, you know, I was working part time, I had my home life balance. And I just think you can't have it all. You can, but maybe not at the same time. So I think it's been an interesting kind of evolution to do all three ways between working tons of hours, between working no hours and being home, which might be the hardest of of them all, then to working part-time and kind of finding a balance and to transitioning over to Candor Path where our company culture is work-life balance, which is just such a a breath of fresh air. 
Yeah, I'm I'm curious. So back to the to the event planning days, um, and obviously the the word event planning it's much more than that. I mean, it was kind of like under this marketing umbrella um, that you worked under. But as I recall, I mean, you would have like all out stints where I mean, it's like round the clock, morning, noon, and night, right? But then there's oh, but yeah. then there's maybe this opposite effect where things are a little bit slower at different times. How did you even manage right. that? I mean, that's like to have a work schedule like that, which I'm sure some people listening to do have that type of work schedule. How'd you manage there's, that? There's definitely no sense of normalcy. And I often like tell my husband at night when we're having our glass of wine, like, I crave consistency. I want consistency. And he's like, you'd be so bored if you actually had consistency. Um, and he's not wrong. I thrive on that place of uh, seeing an event, see it all the way through, finishing a big project like that. So I think it ended up being a good balance for me because I could have those crazy times, but yet I could pick my daughter up from school every day and go to gymnastics. And it is, it's full scope. When you're in the middle of an event, it takes um, leadership, it takes creativity, it takes thinking fast on the spot, it takes walking 25,000 steps in a day in 100 degree weather. Um, it's really all encompassing, which I think really prepared me for an operations role with with Candor Path. It's the experience definitely translates. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. What I mean, I'm I'm curious to hear from you on this because obviously, as we said, work life balance is a big deal. Um, what are what are some of the thoughts that you have in this regard? I mean, over the time of our podcast, we've been talking about this for a couple of years, but how have things changed pre COVID, post COVID for you? Yeah, I, I think well, going back to what you said a moment ago, the work-life balance is not just a, a tagline for our company. It's It really is very much a motto. And it's because, I think it's because in our profession, we have a very unique perspective that we, and I've said this before in other interviews and podcasts, that we, we have just roughly call it 200 clients. So we have 200 groups of people who we got to see in their lives what has worked and what has not worked. And I don't mean that necessarily in a negative manner, but we get to see the person who is super stressed out and who's shoveling as much money as they can aside and, and life is passing by while they are got their heads down working. And then we've seen the other one where we've had clients who one year into retirement um, you know, have passed away, uh, you know, due to unexpected circumstances. And so I think for us, and I'll speak on your behalf too, John, because I'm I can is that we we get to see all these unique perspectives and we also see that that there's not always that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and we've got to enjoy life along the way and I really think that motto for myself in particular is what we then bring to the rest of our team to let them know that hey you know there's not a set schedule for time off there there is uh, you know, in your particular situation taking your daughter I know she's very involved in in gymnastics. Um, my son's involved in karate. John's daughter right now was, was at one point involved in, in softball and being part of those um, elements because for kids in particular, this is actually a very short phase of all of our lives. I mean, maybe we get 15 years where we're the cool parent and then after that, they want nothing to do with us. In a, in a, you know, when, when people are living till hopefully God willing 80 or 90, 15 years is a really small stretch. So we want to make the most of this time. And I really think that passing this along to our staff and, and, and people that work within our company is just, it's, it's almost, almost like a mission of enjoy life. Don't just, don't just let it slip away. And I, I really hope that that passes through to you, Megan, when you're thinking about all the fun things that are happening in your life right now. Well, it's, it's a very good way to put it. It is definitely a mission. And I think it's always evolving. And I think the three of us even struggle with it, even though we're trying to set this example and grow our company culture in this direction. It's still a challenge because I think we we love our jobs. And I think that shows through to hopefully everyone listening. And when we're at work, we want to do more, 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 more. What else can we do? We love it. But then when you're home, it's like you want to be there, too. And it's this constant like pull of what is the right balance. Um, and we are fortunate enough to be in that situation. Yeah, yeah I, I think, I've said it before. Oh, sorry, John. I, I was just gonna say I said it before. Where sometimes on vacation, I'm more stressed than when I'm at the office because then going through your mind is what's happening while you're not there. Now, what has helped that tremendously is having an incredible team that I know is handling it all. But still, as as you know, as as a person of leader with leadership within our company, that is really stressful at times to not be connected. Whereas when I am connected, at least I kind of know everything that's going on right now, and and I I have less stresses 
And so that's something that just takes the brain to be rewired. And it also is a, is a testament to having a team around you as opposed to being on your own and doing every single element of, of work is, <laughs> is being able to have people you can count and support on that you know are working at a very high level, which is, which is what I think we have right now. I, I read this quote that just kind of goes along with what you were just saying. And um, I don't even know if it's true. I like saw it on TikTok or Instagram. But it's got to it, be true, it's, <laughs> Yeah, everything you read on the internet is true. It said that 93% of the time that you spend with your children over their lifetime happens like in the first 18 years of it. Like because they're with you. Like they live under your roof and they're with you. And I don't know if that percentage is exactly right. But I have to believe that the overwhelming majority of the time that you spend is is between now and 18. And uh, I was joking with uh, one of our staff the other day about what I like in an ideal world, what my week would look like. And I said, well, I'd be a full-time stay-at-home dad and I'd also work 120 hours a week because I love, <laughs> I love my family and I love being with my kids, but I also love what we do for our clients. I love what we're building um, and, and the company culture that we have. And it's like, to Megan's point, like you want to have all things at all times, but I think finding balance is just this like pro- progression or evolution that it, it's never, it's never perfect. Like it always has to constantly be worked on and thought through. And I also think that um, since we started working remotely, which like we maybe had the good fortune of, of, of jumping onto that uh, trend slightly earlier when we started our company in like 2018 and fast forward 24 months, the whole world is working virtually and remotely um, and that can be such a blessing, but it can also be a, a double-edged sword in that I'm, I, I'm constantly available. I, I, you know, I used to have an Apple watch. I don't wear it anymore because I was so tired of how much it would ding at me, but I'm constantly available. I have a home office. I can step in and out of the office. So Megan, I'm kind of curious, like, how do you handle, so you go from working, uh, at a company like Disney and having these like all out sprints, uh, round the clock work, um, and, and then transition to a role that was right off the bat, pretty much virtual, like remote work. How, how do, I mean, I'm curious because I think a lot of people experienced that when COVID happened, like managing your work day and then being able to say no when you say no. Like, how, how did you how did you feel like you balanced all that? I think if there's one good thing that came out of COVID, I think it was normalizing kind of remote working And I think that's been huge. I came from an environment where when you're working, you should be in the office and that's, Mm -hmm. that's where you got work done. That's where things happen. So to see that evolve, I think is, is really cool. Um, I think it was such a natural transition. Basically, I think because we all three got along so well and it was just kind of very easy for us to like jump into that role and for me to fill, fill a need that you guys had at the time. And I was furloughed. So I was home um, not doing much. And so it's kind of a natural, slow evolution and progression for us. And it, it was, it's very different. It's a very different world. Um, you know, Disney is a massive company. I got to do really, really cool things at Disney, but it's on a lot of creative things and outside the box things and things that uh, you, you've seen on the news, I'm sure, with openings of different lands I've been involved in and things. But when we moved over to candor path i think we were a small but mighty team and i think we all spent time identifying each other's strengths and kind of lifting each other up but also listening so if john's like i need to change my work schedule or matt's like i'm at capacity with this um, just really respecting each other and figuring out how to improve each other's work-life balance and that that's normal for us now uh, which i think is just so fascinating and I hope that more people will continue to evolve in that direction. We still have very high productivity. I think we work a lot. I think we work very hard, uh, but to be able to be honest about going to get a haircut sometimes or running to lunch or running to pick your kids up or running to the grocery store because you forgot you have to make cupcakes for school tomorrow and just being able to have that flexibility and normalizing that I think is, is, 
I, I love seeing that on our team calendar when I see that, you know, uh, uh, you know, team members heading to the gym at, at noon or 12 o'clock. You know, I would think the traditional way is, hey, how about well, when I run by this- your how about when I run by your house? <laughs> I don't mind that. Day. It's when you don't have a shirt on in our neighborhood. And, uh, you know, I'm oh, rocking boy. the dad bot over here. And this one is, you know, <laughs> is pulling his um, top gun volleyball scene, you know, <laughs> chest out and running the around our neighborhood compliment you've ever given me thank you <laughs> right you're the val kilmer by the way i'm <laughs> um no i'm just kidding um but i love seeing that when i look at our team calendar and see that 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 someone is picking their child up from school and has blocked off a little bit of time or like i said going to the gym i know when i'm done working out all those endorphins are kicking in i'm massively productive that might also mean that i'm sitting and eating my lunch at my desk that day because i chose to do something else other than take a traditional lunch hour but I, I look at those things and think, wow, how cool. Now, I think there's also a line, and I've talked to a lot of uh, people that are, you know, I've, I've worked with other business owners, and I'm in, in in groups and things like that. And there's there's some that it hasn't worked out as well for. They're having to put tracking on computers to make sure the time is being spent, you know, where it needs to be work-wise. And I think that there is a, a line there that's really hard. As a team of s- soon-to-be six, fairly manageable when that team is maybe 20 is in team member number 19 really pulling their weight that that's really hard when you're not seeing what they're doing day to day i think ultimately down the road it gets more complicated but where we are today it's fairly simplistic to track that my question back to you megan is where does that line stand and where are you starting where would you get concerned if you're not seeing the productivity day in and day out what are some steps you would take to correct that I think trust and honesty are the key elements. Like we're all working remote. We all stay connected all day long. So I don't think anyone ever feels isolated. We talk about that a lot internally about staying connected and nobody feeling isolated working remote. But I think that trust and being so open and honest about that trust and the first person to break it, you know, we'll have, we'll have to cross that bridge when we get to it. And hopefully it's not for a long time and we put the right, processes in place and the right communication tools in place that that doesn't happen. But I think just alone creating that environment where people can put on their calendar, it's not a secret if you need to go get a haircut or if you need to go get a massage or take care of yourself. It doesn't have to be a secret. And we're not we're not encouraging anyone to hide what they actually need to do to take care of themselves and to take care of that work-life balance. So I think just having the ability to be so open and honest about where we are and and two, just checking on capacity, how everyone's feeling with their workloads and making sure that they do have that balance and, and staying connected, I think it's probably the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was we gonna just say, had a teammate. I think, oh, oh go, go ahead. John. I was gonna no. say we just had a team member whose AC went out and <laughs> and she was like, hey, listen, my AC's out. I, I'm gonna, you know, it's really hard for me to work. I'm gonna go ahead and take some time to to fix this problem. I I want them working on that. And and then She's also said, hey, I'm going to go run over to a coffee shop and work from there. And to be able to be flexible and remote, I think, provides oftentimes less stress for the team member and also a lot more autonomy over their own time and making sure that A, they're working in the environment that they want to work and and B, that if there's an issue that comes up, they can properly address that issue like that. We're here in Florida in summer. The last thing you want to do is be without air conditioning right now. Do whatever it takes to fix that problem. We know we're going to have a happier team member once once that problem is exactly. resolved. Exactly, and, so- and I even when that information comes to us, and it's not like, oh, well, make sure you then work tonight to make up the time. The fact is, like, do you need a contact for an AC repairman? We we know one, um, and, and it's it's helping that and encouraging that honesty that we can be that transparent with our team. And I just you hit the nail on the head. I think that's exactly what, what allows it to happen so naturally. Yeah. I, I would say that, um, I've learned over the years that virtual working is, it's definitely not for everyone. I think we've had the good fortune that everyone that, that works within our team has a high degree of accountability. And when I rewind to just a couple of years ago, when it was only the three of us, um, Fortunately, we had such a high degree of trust for everyone. And for what it's worth, you know, Megan, um, you know, our relationship goes way back. Like we've known each other since 2010, 2009, 
Yeah, at least. Something like eight that. Eight or nine. Yeah. And so when we started working together in like the event planning capacity before it ultimately evolved into a full time role and then director of ops, um, that high degree of trust was there right off the bat. And I, I think that's what it takes, especially for virtual work. Cause like you said, um, our first thought isn't like, Hey, okay. So are you going to get this work done tonight? Or like, are you going to make up hours? That's crazy. And I came from a place where that was sort of the talk track, you know, like if you showed up late, uh, it was like, well, why aren't you here? Or calling in sick was like the worst feeling in the world. Um, that I felt so guilty about and and those types of feelings like that's not how that's just not how somebody should feel whether they're you know whether they've been with the company for three months or three years like it it just shouldn't be that way um let's let's talk a little bit about because we had talked about traction and and EOS earlier in this and I think um kind of going connecting to this whole like high degree of accountability I think for us um, you know, utilizing this framework for how we set our goals and and kind of and run our business. I mean, that's created an even deeper level of intention and accountability. And maybe that's one of the reasons I would go as far to say is like, that's one of the reasons why we have such a high degree of trust too, is like, we know we're working towards these goals that we set for ourselves, whether it's quarterly or annually. And that doesn't necessarily have to translate into like nine to five work. Like something might hit you, Megan, at like nine o'clock at night. And you're going to, you're going to jot it down and make the notes and bring it to the team the next day. Like it's, it's, you know, I, I think that that helps us a lot. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. I, I mean, I have some of my best ideas and my, my shower thoughts in the morning, yeah. um, <laughs> typically where I get my creative juices. Uh, but I do think the, the goal setting is huge. And I think what's been really cool is I was new to the traction EOS method when I came in. And then I saw a post on Facebook that my uncle who has a construction company locally was also doing it. And he was sitting down and setting a quarterly rocks and doing a quarterly meeting with his team. And I'm like, wow, this is so cool. This translates through so many industries, Mm -hmm. again, just with that accountability piece and know what we're working towards. And it's been fun as our team has grown to really think about how to include the whole team in that goal setting and the, the excitement of, of where we're headed and what we're trying to accomplish is I think also very motivating and helps build upon that trust and, and honesty too. And as we talked about in our last episode, it's not rocket science, what we're doing this, this EOS and I've handed the book out to a number of our clients and business owners and it it gets a little intimidating, but I mean, the most simplistic form is have a 10 year goal, back that into what you need to do in three years to have that 10 year goal be achievable back that into one year, what you need to have that three year goal achievable. And then back that into 90 days, small little issues. I mean, if at the, at the very basics of it is simply stating a 10 year goal and putting that on a piece of paper. Now there's a lot more that goes into it in terms of the tracking mechanisms. And, and that's where I'm a high level when it comes to it. And John really gets in the weeds with it, but um, it's a, it's the most simplistic form. It's, it's have a plan. And I think, in our financial planning business that we're in, that's the number one topic we have for most of our clients is have a plan when it comes to your finances. In this case, it's have a plan when it comes to your business. Yeah. What, what I really like about it, you know, it kind of boils everything down to this thing called the VTO, which we talked about the vision traction organizer. And so you've got this two page document that is sort of this, this blueprint and um, vision boards may be a strange word, but like it, it does, it, you know, you do put a three year goal a three-year picture of what you want your company to look like. And I think you take somebody like Matt, you take somebody like me as an example, where um, Matt is a man of few words. I, <laughs> I, you know, if, if you wrote like, what were your goals for the company in 10 years? It's like a sentence and mine's a dissertation. Um, and so it's really interesting. Just think about like, that was probably a lot of effort for Matt to be like, okay, we're going to put we're going to put everything on two pages. Like I could put it on one sentence. And then I'm over here like, we <laughs> only have two pages to put everything, only two pages. Mm-hmm. And and yet come, the coming together of that and then creating this very succinct, concise, uh, but but yet very specific idea of what we want the company to look like and what, what our goals are. And as you said, take it from a 10 year and then just kind of keep bringing it down and then saying, you know, this whole idea is like, we sort of mentally as humans operate in 90 day segments. Like it's hard to sort of think past 
what am I going to do in the next 90 days? And so that's why we do these quarterly rocks meetings, which Megan has been instrumental in guiding those conversations and being a sounding board. Otherwise it's just Matt and I talking at each other all day. Like Megan's really helped come in and like make that a useful conversation. Oftentimes she's the referee. Yeah. She's the referee. She will call us. She's called me out before many times as a matter of fact. And actually our most recent uh, meeting I was called out for flip-flopping on, on some thoughts that I had. And it, it was like, well, Matt, what do you want? Do you want this or that? You, you said one thing and now you think something else, which is it? And I said yes to both. Like I want it all my way. The, I want it always. How does that sound? And well, she said, that's not going to You're honest about it at least. But I think that's where we're all such a good balance. I think I'm probably the re- realist of the group. Don is definitely the dreamer of the group. And Matt Guilty. is the all over the place. Oh, is that a word? How did this turn into a beat up map? Oh. I prefer to use the word visionary mm-hmm. and integrator if we're going to use Gina Wickman's um, terminology. Thank you well, very much. That's very true. And we do. And we reference that a lot, right? For our accountability chart. And even as we build out org charts, we go back to our, our traction books and, and look at those examples. Um, and if we are using those terms, you're exactly right. John is definitely the visionary <laughs> of the group. Um, and we will all get new nicknames from from this podcast. I like that. <laughs> I, I have a I have a question that maybe kind of brings some of this stuff full circle. Um, and I didn't prepare you either of you for it, so apologies. But have you found that doing this within our business, um, th- th- this whole traction model, you know, setting goals, quarterly rocks, that type of stuff, have you found that to um, then kind of translate over to like the personal side of your life. And I'm going to ask Megan first, cause you're a guest on the show, uh, Matt. So I can tell you're already excited to answer this question, judging by the look on your face. <laughs> um, but have you found that that translates over to the personal mm-hmm. side of your life? Like for me, I now like set these goals for myself and I think I do it because of traction. And it's not like I share them with you guys. They're like families things and stuff I want to do, but have you noticed any of that at all? I'm, I'm just curious. Uh, I think you're very good at that, John, uh, goal setting in general for yourself personally. Well, I don't, and I don't hit the goals, but I'm good at setting them. <laughs> you're, good, you're good at making them. Um, I do sometimes. I feel like for me, it's a reaction to when I'm getting to a place where I feel out, out of balance or overwhelmed. And I make small goals to try to improve <laughs> that. And some of them are silly things like listen to music while you're working in your office or you know, making the bed in the morning and, and silly things like that. Um, but I, that's not my personality. Like it is yours. I, um, it's people always think it's funny because as a corporate event planner, I don't feel like I'm actually very good at planning my own life. I just, I I may do too much organizing day in and day out, I think. So it definitely gets me thinking more and, and more professional goals like with mm-hmm. I want to do with like the HR course and certificate so that I can h- help build our team even further and, and things like that that are both personal and professional. I don't know if that answered your question. Boy, that was the most politically correct any- answer. I'm going to say, <laughs> John, good. a resounding a resounding no way ho is a as the integrator. I wish I could have my head up in the clouds like you do all the time. But no, I'm here. <laughs> got to get things done no i'm just kidding it takes i would say as the integrator you would set goals wouldn't you like you you'd want to like put your down so. and do, the, do the things i you but like i just goals. like you like goals. yeah i like yeah. goals i don't like setting goals i like if a goal is like if we're coming up in our well we're talking about personal life so different yeah. from business <laughs> business sure. i definitely think you need goals and and then and then accomplishing those goals is good uh for my personal life um no, not really. I don't really think it's carried over too, too much there. I think maybe just being conscious of if there's something that I want long term, breaking that down into the various steps now that I'm sort of reflecting on it, I think is something I've taken away from it. Um, setting maybe a 10 year picture, which I'm always kind of looking at is where where will we be personally, yeah. my family in 10 years? And if that's going to be the case, what do we need to do now to sort of set us up for that? So there's always that element, but that's sort of the financial planner in me as well. Yeah. Um. And, um, you know, so much of my life is, is really family and business. Um, I don't have a ton of hobbies, uh, besides spending time out on the water. Um, and so for me, it's, I, I love so much of what I do on the work side that sometimes on the personal side, I just, I just need to be a dad and a husband and yeah, maybe not oh, that's have a great answer, though. such yeah. ambitious, <laughs> like I must go and do this. Cause I, I really am accomplishing in my heart 
my I'm so full on the business side that I'm not I'm not sort of missing that and I need more personal accomplishments on the personal side. So but maybe that's you, the way of saying it. Yeah. And I think that you might not recognize all the goals any any of us are trying to accomplish. We're, we're all planning something. That's our nature. All three of us, we're planners, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think that we're also all fixers. So like, while they might not be goals in your personal life, if there's something to fix, you're going to fix it. Um, and I mm -hmm. think we're all three like that. Like we all want to do the fixing, which I think ultimately is, is goal setting, really. You nailed it perfectly. This is this is this is why we have you, Megan. You are able to take <laughs> the, the one that has his head in the clouds, the one whose head is buried in the ground, and then somehow bring it all together. And uh, you did an awesome job. I think what you said was kind of important, though. Like you had made a comment, and well, you both have alluded to this, but the way Matt said it was. I'm I'm full on the business side. I think what you meant was like my heart's full. Like I enjoy what I'm like I'm. I'm excited about what I do and I like what I do. And, um, you know, just, just a few short years ago, uh, at, at, like for me anyway, like the prior company that I was at, I didn't feel that way. So it's so interesting because like the optics of what we do for a living, like nobody would look at that situation and be like, oh, you started Canter Path. Like life's so different for you now. They just look at it like, oh, you were like a CFP before. You're a CFP now and you help people with your finances. And so like your life didn't change a whole lot. For me though, like there was a massive amount of change um, to the tune of more happiness. Like I didn't, we talk about like work-life balance, Megan, like I didn't feel like I had balance at all because I was so unhappy on the work side. Um, and then it was just so amazing to me to see like what that looked like when I decided, you know, okay, I'm going to take charge of my life and not, you know, I just don't want to be unhappy here forever in this current situation. Um, and obviously like that's, that's a, that's a big change. It's a big overhaul, but I'm always thinking about, um, and I guess this is where I was going with the VTO thing and looking at like tra like using traction and then on the personal side, it's a weird thought, but the three-year picture is a big deal for me. Like when we map out like what's our, like what do we, what's life going to look like on our three-year picture? What's the stuff that's in there? Like the stuff that we have written down is like stay in your zone of genius, like the work that gives you energy, um, you know, make sure we're taking X amount of time off to be with our family. That's the stuff that's in there. That's not like, be it, you know, be it this, you know, revenue per client or whatever. It's not driven by those things. It's driven by like happiness and joy. And I do that now with like my personal life. I look at like, I kind of do this like audit. I'm like, well, what do I want it to look like in three years? Like finding this whole like work-life balance thing. Like what, what, you know, how, how can I get better and, and how can I change this? And then I sort of make goals from that. So that, that's kind of like an interesting exercise for me was to like take that three-year picture and just sort of think like, what's my personal life going to look like? And What's balance look like then? Because that's something that we're like, like I said, we, we've been sort of the theme interwoven in this whole conversation is finding balance. I like that idea. I think I will. I will uh, start trying, attempting to do that. Interesting well, you, you'd be good at it because you give us balance and you keep us all on task <laughs> for, for what we do. I, I always <laughs> enjoy speaking with you, Megan. Uh, you always bring out uh, the best in, I think, John and myself, especially on uh, when we're and we're you know having these uh, weekly meetings and and talking through our company um, and nope I think you are the gorilla glue that holds us together. Well, thank you. I enjoy being that glue for sure. Megan, thank you so much for being a part of our podcast. On behalf of John, myself, the Rich B, uh, we just want to thank everyone so much for listening. We're so happy to be back in the saddle here with uh, back on our podcast schedule. So keep an eye out for future. Uh, episodes and uh, we look forward to uh, chatting with everyone soon.